Hey guys, my name is the one who eats lemons, and I just came home minutes ago from、uh, my first、uh, time seeing Star Wars: The Rise of Skywalker, and I just need I need I need I have not prepared this video. I have not really thought about what I was gonna say about this. This these are just my very initial thoughts about this movie. And、uh, they w- it will contain no spoilers beyond what the trailers already showed us. So please rest assured that this is、uh, you you will risk nothing by watching it, or really just by hearing it, because really this video is just a, a tiny bit of me、uh, in a really big poster. I really like this poster, by the way. And the reason I am still keeping the camera so small, like it's a let's play video or something, is because the camera is really not that good. It's not gonna look good、uh, if it's augmented. And、uh, to be honest, who'd want to see my face、uh, or on a big screen anywhere anyway? But just saying,、uh, I feel like the, as a Star Wars fan these days,、uh, wh- whenever we talk about our opinions or anything Star Wars related, we need to kind of state our well. <laughs> Our pre opinions on、uh, some of the previous things, just to、uh, let people n- have a fair understanding of where you stand and、uh, how likely they are to agree or disagree with us. S- uh, to begin with,、uh, just because Star Wars is so diverse and the fan base is so diverse, and、uh, some of the materials recently have、uh, quite have been quite divisive. And I,、uh, well, here's my standing with all、uh, with all things Star Wars,、uh, particularly in relation to the movies. I have enjoyed every single feature film that has been released so far, with the notable exception of、uh, the Star Wars: The Clone Wars movie from 2008. I don't really consider that a Star Wars movie, even though it definitely fits every description and definition of a feature film. It was released widely in cinema, and people did actually pay to see that in cinema. Um, the only reason I can, <sighs> I'm not trying to justify my, my myself, but the only real justification is that it was not made with、uh, motion picture in mind. Dave Filoni was asked to scramble the first arc of the Clone Wars TV show and、uh, put together a movie at the George Lucas behest.、Um, so it 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 wasn't really movie animation quality. But that's beside the point. I'm not here to do a review on the Clone Wars. I'm here to talk about the rise of Skywalker. So yeah, I have enjoyed, I've loved a few of the Star Wars movies, and I have enjoyed the rest. I'm a really big Star Wars fan. Oh,、uh, I'm not gonna be the biggest Star Wars fan that you're、uh, ever gonna see on the internet.、Uh, for example, I can't tell you what most of the ships that appeared in the Rise of Skywalker trailers r- are. I can't really tell you what class they are, or what they're called, or in what previous movies or TV episode that they have appeared. So, and I think I guess it's fair to say that people have been really divisive about the new, new trilogy. And as for the Force Awakens and the Last Jedi, I have immensely enjoyed both of them.、Uh, I prefer the Last Jedi just a little bit over Force Awakens. I、uh, rest assured, I am not really trying to tell you that any of them are a perfect movie. If anything, I'd say,、uh, aside from、uh, The Empire Strikes Back, which is pretty much as perfect a Star Wars movie has ever been. All of the others, A New Hope, Return of the Jedi included, have notable. Flaws,、uh, but I'm not gonna waste time、uh, talking about them in this video. This is, you you see, I have when it comes to Star Wars, I just can't stop. I have about an hour of time, and I'm afraid most of them <laughs> are going to be、uh, just me diverging into various other Star Wars related topics and not focus on the one that I'm supposed to be talking about, the one that you are actually sh- seeing the visual representation of, and. Well, the rise of Skywalker is a really complicated movie to talk about, and、uh, only even more complicated since I really haven't given myself any time to let any of the opinions well finalize. Because when it comes to movies, the the Star Wars movies, and you know some of the later Avengers movies, these films that y- that have been built up so. So much. You, there are so many expectations, and you're really deep into the fandom mentality. It's a really dangerous thing, and、uh, 
and over the years i've tried t- I, I i think i've taught myself to keep that expectations in control particularly for the first time seeing the movie because the, the thing that happened with force awakens uh was that was like the h- biggest hype i hype train i have ever hopped up onto um when i was when i w- came out of that movie i i didn't even know if i liked it or not just because my mind was a buzz throughout the whole thing uh, there were plot points that i missed there were characters that i uh, whose names i forgot immediately afterwards it, i i was elated by that experience of uh, seeing star wars in cinema again i was so happy that i forgot to actually enjoy the movie and i've been trying really hard to prevent that from ever happening again and i think i got it pretty under control because we've had some really exciting movies over the past few years uh i'd say pa- over the past uh, half a decade since the force awakens came out oh my god has it really been that long because i remember seeing the force awakens the first time like yesterday um so they made the force awakens jj abrams did that movie he also directed uh, this movie the rise of skywalker but in between there's this little project called the last jedi last the jedi who was direct uh, which was directed by ryan johnson written and directed by this man uh, uh, as a matter of fact and they are very competing very different uh, voices in terms of how they view these this new trilogy and uh, how they approach these new characters and that much has been very obvious to most of the to most of us and that's only going to seem more so uh, more to be the case if you've seen this movie so without giving any specific plot points away i'm gonna just to share some of my initial observations now bear in mind that uh, this i'm only made i've only it was like half an hour ago that i've walked out of the cinema so these are really really initial opinions and they are subject to complete 180 degree change anytime within the next two weeks because i'm going to go back to see this movie again and probably again after that at at the very least and the rise of skywalker is a movie that really warrants a few reviewings i know there's this school of opinion that if your movie requires multiple viewings to be to be enjoyed uh then it's really not a good movie per se it's just you, you persuading yourself to enjoy it over and over again until you believe your own lies i know that is uh there, there these kind of opinions do exist but i i don't really agree with them i mean i i, bl- I think movies ever since the how, how shall we time this maybe ever since the existence of home video movies are produced to be viewed over and over again they are made with that kind of viewing pattern in mind so i don't really consider that a really strong argument i mean of course it's it's the best if a movie can be thoroughly enjoyed the first time you watch it you have a great cinema cinematic experience and after that you take the movie out again and again and again and you enjoy it even more uh you find a few things you like that you missed the first time or the second time and that's the kind of perfect movie experience that we're talking about but that's really rare you don't you don't really go into a, a, a new movie and expect that really high level of brilliance because that's just unfair to the to the filmmakers and it's ve- and it gets really dangerous when it comes to uh, franchises such as Star Wars that uh, y- you and I probably have such a solid mental holding on to now i've talked about all this that i haven't really talked about how i liked or disliked the the rise of skywalker i'm going to say it's a different movie it feels very different even though it's directed by jj abrams again it feels different from the force awakens and it definitely is different from the last jedi so this new trilogy has been i've enjoyed it 
I've enjoyed it a lot. I'm very, I consider myself very blessed to have seen all three of these movies multiple times in cinema. And I think those movies carry a, uh, a multitude of real high qualities, both in terms of production, design, and creativity. Well, as for creativity, it's not really up to the level of George Lucas, but you get what I mean. There are some aspects of it that has, uh, from this new trilogy that has been, the, I believe, this at, the fr at the franchise's best, such as dialogue quality. And... Th where where this movie really differs from uh, its immediate cousin, wi by which I mean The Force Awakens, because they're directed by the same person, is that it's it's really fast. Well, The Force Awakens wasn't was a pretty clear cut one two three act structure. You get the first introduction scene with Ray, mostly with Ray on Jakku. Uh, you get a middle chapter, which is where Ray Han they go to the uh, uh, Mars's. Oh, well, is Mars's place a cantina or is that a palace? I'm not really sure. And you get a, th a final act on the Star Killer base. It's a very typical hero's journey story, so that's why people say it's kind of a beat by beat thing with th uh, New Hope. And uh, they're not completely wrong in, in that regard. It does follow that same pattern. The Rise of Skywalker follows no pattern recognizable to Star Wars fans previous to this day, I believe. And that, I that can be both a good or bad thing. And I think it's it has a very unique rhythm with other Star Wars movies. So you kind of have to train yourself, maybe through the first, uh, at least the first half an hour of this movie, to train yourself to get into that rhythm in order to thoroughly enjoy the rest of the two hours because you're I, I believe if you are like me uh, for the first few scenes of this movie you're gonna be taken aback by how fast paced it, it is it's almost like oh that's the scene from this trailer and it's done it's actually not that much longer than what the trailer showed us hmm so it's a very curious case. I believe this movie is going to be debated about. Uh, it's going to be talked about. It's it's made to appease fans on both sides of the Last Jedi argument. But in the end, I think it's still going to be divisive. I believe the last time I checked, this movie maybe sits something like 56% on Rotten Tomatoes. Not that that rating really means anything. But just out of curiosity, I'm going to go check it out now. The Rise of Skywalker. Yep. 56% and that is yeah that's not good for a Star Wars movie but you know we all have our own opinions of how s of these Star Wars movies so the the more popular a franchise is with audience the less relevant it's a uh, critic rating may be uh, that's just my take on it especially when it comes to a an obviously flawed system like the Rotten Tomatoes I mean it's really just the subjectivity of film that we are settling on things like the, the the Rotten Tomatoes ratings to begin with, I am uh, <laughs> I am running on on a, a completely different route again. So uh, let me rail it back. Um, there are things I really liked about the Rise of Skywalker, and there are things I don't think I liked. Now, uh, bear in mind again, these are uh, just initial opinions. They could change upon a second or third viewing. The one thing I noticed uh, almost immediately, and that opinion held very true till the very end, is that as an immediate successor to The Last Jedi, seeing the, baton, seeing the baton passed from Ryan Johnson back to J.J. Abrams, unfortunately, there is a huge dip in terms of cinematography. Um, this movie is... Uh, the Rise of Skywalker is... A little dull in the coloring department. What you see in this poster is pretty much the color that you see in the movie, ap apart from a few desert scenes, because you gotta have desert scenes in the Star Wars film for some reason. <laughs> and you see that in the trailer. I should also point out that if you are sensitive to lightning effects, just like lightning in the rainstorm, flashing lights, these kind of things you should consider 
well, not seeing this movie on a really big screen. Because there are a lot of it. I mean, JJ no longer does that uh, lens flare thing he did so obnoxiously in Star Trek reboot. But in this movie, he kind of replaced that with shining lights, with <laughs> just flashing uh, on your face. I, I don't know. It feels like a mo in, in a lot of parts of the movie, I feel like I'm, uh, I'm, a, I'm not actually at a screening of the Rise of Skywalker movie. I'm actually at the red carpet event of the, st- of, of the movie of the movie's premiere and I'm one of the stars r- walking on the red carpet and there are a ton of uh, photographers shining their flashlights at, at my eyes. That's That can be overwhelming at times and I try to keep my eyes open at all times. I'm not actually all that good uh, uh, to handle the scenes but I, but I know there are uh, lo- lots of people who are better at it. So that could be, uh, some people might consider that exhilarating. To me, it was kind of exhausting. But I, but I, uh, ha- but I held true throughout the, the affair. Uh, I don't think I really I missed a lot <laughs> of the, that. But when you think about The Last Jedi, I know people have very varying opinions about it, about how the story went, about uh, some of the plot lines and uh, some and how the uh, characters were handled people are very divisive about those kind of things but the one thing i see people almost universally agreeing on is that it's beautiful it looks great its cinematography is top-notch possibly the best of the franchise and that it's very notable that uh, this movie is not that in fact it is this one i i'm, I'm not even sure because i need to think about I need to rewatch this movie along with all of the rest to, m- to truly make up my mind on this matter. But this may just be the most ugly, well, I should say the ugliest Star Wars movie that I've ever existed. Uh, it's not easy for me to say that. But the color schemes and some of the scale of this movie, you see the grand, some of the grandest scenes in the trailer some of them look really good and it's not like the, it's ugly throughout it's just fe- i feel like uh, some of the really heavy beats some emotional moments and the uh, important plot point moments the scenes weren't all that memorable sometimes it's just a dark cave and that's about it so it's not a very interesting they don't sometimes things interesting things don't take place at an interesting location which is disappointing uh, well if you were wa- if you didn't like how the last jedi tried to um j- just break your expectations at almost every turn i think the rise of skywalker may fit your taste better in that regard because it does try its damnedest to bring back the uh, to uh, to mend the f- the fissure in the fan base or something along those lines. Like I said, the quality of the movie is gonna be divisive, but there's but there's it's not gonna, it's gonna be a different divisiveness than the Last Jedi. I think the intent of this movie is not going to be questioned. It tries its damnedest to be the ultimate Star Wars movie. You know. All these advertisements about this being the last of the saga, the last of Star Wars uh, numbered movie, the, the the end of the journey that has been going on for 40 years. As much of a Star Wars fan as I am, as much excited as excited as I was for this movie, I never bought any of that. The Star Wars ends all the time, man. Uh, Return of the Jedi came out in 1983 and it closed the deal. That was the end of the trilogy. And Revenge of the Sith came out in 2005. That was the end of the prequels. And the saga still ended on Return of the Jedi. And that was it. For the longest of time, that was the last of the Star Wars movies. It's After that, they decided to make make uh, the sequels. And it never really... I, I never felt like the sequels could... Uh, the ending of the sequels could ever, ever replace the finality of Return of the Jedi. I mean, these are, yes, they are, they belong in the uh, same universe and they are uh, an official continuation of the story and they like these stories very much, but they kind of feel like a new phase of the story. It's kind of like the Marvel phase one, two, three. So, 
uh, uh, let's you continue to use Marvel for an example. Endgame, Avengers Endgame. I hope you've seen this because that mo uh, that movie has a, a lot of tone of uh, finality to it, and it's so finale that uh, Spider Man Far From Home came out if, uh, almost immediately after it. And it did not take away the finality of that movie. Whatever. Uh, whatever they do in Phase Four, whatever the last movie in Phase Four is gonna be, it's not going to take away the fact that Avengers Endgame was a grand finale for the Marvel Cinematic Universe up to that point. Let's say from now on, from every uh, Marvel Phase Four movie onwards, from Black Widow onwards, they all suck ass. They're completely unenjoyable. They are abominations of our humankind. And and Marvel loses its its entire fanfare. That's not gonna happen. But let's say it is. It will not change what phases one, two, three uh, achieved, culminating with Avengers Endgame. Because there, uh, it kind of sealed the deal. It drew a line that was not easily broken. I feel like Return of the Jedi was that. I mean, it wasn't a perfect movie to me, but it did. It's, uh, but it, but it did draw a line of finality, and I don't think the new movies ever really broke that line. I don't think they ever tried to. It's just the marketing department that's constantly reminding people that like, this is the last of the saga. The forty-year journey comes to an end. Well, <laughs> yes and no. You get my meaning. It's kind of really hard to talk about this movie without spoilers. This, uh, like I said, this movie is not prepared, so I, I don't know what else I can, I uh, can really explain without diving into specific plot points. I can, however, say that this movie was. See, the thing is, the Star Wars fan in me and the movie fan in me are constantly battling. They are, it's like they have two lightsabers of their own and they're doing this lightsaber battle in my head all the freaking time. Kind of like this poster. Except, you know, they are not really the dark side or the light side. All of them, both of them are, both of them are good in my opinion. It's just that they don't really agree with most of the things. The Star Wars fans in me sees this movie and points various uh, uh, exclaims at the, a lot of these things and and believes that these are awesome. The film fan in me is more critical, and the film fan in me kind of up uh, uh, opines that there are a lot of cool things in the movie, but ultimately the. It's not that good of a movie, and it's kind of hard to explain because I've always been very uh, negative on the sort of opinion that this is a uh, this is not a good movie, but it's a good XXX movie. Like a lot of some people say, the Last of Jedi is a good movie, but not a good Star Wars movie. I never really buy in this kind of argument, but now I'm kind of feeling it. The Rise of Skywalker is kind of a mess. I believe, especially for the first hour of it, and I I really need to see a, see it a few more times in order to make sure. Because I'm now wondering if if that's just because the first hour is really really messy and it's out of the pacing is all over the place. Is that really the case, or is it as I said earlier that the movie carries a very unique pace for the Star Wars franchise that I that threw me off guard, and it took an hour or so for me to truly get into the rhythm of the movie, and I enjoy the rest of the movie more. Is that really the case, or is it because I decided that this is not going to be a film-wise masterpiece during the fr after the first hour, and I kind of let myself go? I Dropped my expectations in that regard for the rest of the film, and I enjoyed more because of that. It's really confusing. You see, movies, movie, a, a, a polling an opinion on a movie is not as easy as it is, as it seems. And I'm the only one guy. Um, 
like I said, the movie is fast. It goes through scenes really fast. It's like the, this movie has so much to say. It has so much, so many stories to tell. That at times it just wants to get a few things out of the way. I mean, you can't get it out of the way so thoroughly that you leave it on the, the cutting room floor. They still have to be in there because they contain critical information to continue the story. Um, but some of them are just, it just seems painfully clear to me that J.J. Uh, Abrams, as the parent of all these things, prefer some of his children to some of some of the others and i think a lot of the uh unfavored children are at the first hour uh, sometimes it's just like we need to get this scene out of the way i mean it has like one or two cool moments we'll put that in the trailer but we'll get this we we need this scene closed in five minutes and we need to get this piece of exposition out of the way so it's always just a scene after scene after exposition after another exposition it's very fast paced and it gets a little bit overwhelming uh but the re but the great downside of that fast pacing while it is exciting sometimes is that the emotion the emotion have to is really lacking during some of those moments and i believe the movie suffered from that it's just you, uh, some of the th moments that you think you'd have uh, an emotional height or only for the moment to be robbed because it, it cut to the next scene. And for the first hour, that seemed like to be the case. Like people were constantly talking uh, because someone is always trying to explain the plot. Someone is always trying to get the audience to catch up. Someone is always giving off exposition. And some of the emotional moments, such as a hug between certain characters, just uh, get uh, it gets drowned out in the noise, and you don't really get the opportunity to fully embrace the moment. And um, I'm sure some of these moments sound better on paper, but it's kind of clumsy on screen. I would say there were a few moments that really hit the spot. And I, and and they were as contrast uh, t contrast to some of the other scenes. They were given enough moment for the audiences to dwell upon, and the acting in those scenes were phenomenal. That helped. Adam Driver is a fucking acting beast these this year. He, he I think he gave his best performance as Kylo Ren in this movie and also the, he also had a marriage story this year so he may be even up for a grab for the Oscars best actor award I don't know so I haven't seen marriage story yet I've only seen the clip and I'm, I'm already anxious to see that movie I think uh Basically, acting-wise, Star Wars is not the hardest thing, hardest challenge that an actor can call upon. I think Daisy did a really good job too. Uh, she, w this is really still race race movie. This is her story, and we've been with her on a journey. But it's kind of clear now that the, uh, JJ and Ryan had a different hopes and wishes for this character. And the way it's, you'd think, based on these past experiences and what I'm describing, you'd think that JJ had an idea for this character and some of the other characters like Kylo Ren. And Ryan came in against these wishes, just uh, did his own spin on them. And JJ came back to fix that vision, back to his own. You'd think that's what would happen Except I don't really get that vibe. I don't really think JJ had a lot of this planned out in the when he made The Force Awakens. And I, I really think this is where the new trilogy suffers. Is that it, it's a lack of a creative guiding hand, whether that be from Kathleen Kennedy or from Dave Filoni, or if they had hired George Lucas as a high consultant. S one way or another, someone maybe should have plotted out the course of this new trilogy before hiring talented directors to do their own thing. It's like when you ever want to do 
a, a TV show. I like the, let's we're on the topic of TV show. Let's take the example of the Mandalorian, which a lot of the Star Wars, which basically is the only things that the Star Wars fan base can absolutely agree on these days is that the Mandalorian is a fantastic show and the Baby Yoda is adorable as hell. <laughs> and let's uh, the, the Mandalorian is really successful because it has the creative mind of a. Uh, both Dave Filoni and John Favreau, they were the had uh, the leading producers of this show, and they have different. They hire different directors to direct each episode. And imagine something like that happened to the sequel trilogy. I believe it would have been a lot more coherent. That would definitely help their quality. Although I don't know if maybe this is like really the most interesting way to, for these movies to happen. Like there's inside outside a debate. A contrast of uh, philosophies and visions. I believe if there's one thing, the lack of critical acclaim that is being enjoyed by the rise of Skywalker. If there's any benefit to this at all, I think it's gonna. People are gonna go back to the Last Jedi and re-review that uh, that movie and maybe find some of. And maybe uh, this time some of them will be able to see the movie that Ryan Johnson was actually trying to make instead of how it's not the movie that they were uh, that they wanted at the time. I think there's gonna be some. Uh, I may be too optimistic for that, and I'm, I may be too stuck up in my own opinion of the of the Last Jedi because I really like those movies. I'm not saying anybody is wrong for disliking the movie. The movie has balls of flaws. Um, but I think some of the uh, some of the problems that's going to be perceived in the rise of Skywalker, such as s occasional overflowing of fanfare of uh, of fan appeasing elements and just the fan services in general. Well, most of them I think are cute and uh, good, especially when it com when it comes to Carrie Fisher and uh, her legacy. I think those parts are done very well. The others, not so much. Sometimes a little too on the nose. I think with the flaws of these elements come to pass, maybe people will just it's just a possibility. Maybe they will go back to the Last Jedi and appreciate that a director had a vision that does not really concern what the fan wanted. It just he just wanted to tell his own story, he, and he did his best to, to tell that story. And whether or not you like the story that he was trying to tell, that's uh, not a matter entirely. But he did have a very unique, very, very constructed, very thought out vision. I'm going to admit, when it comes to character building, I kind of like The Last Jedi better than this one. The Last Jedi made... Uh, uh, was a v very character-driven movie. You have each character, Ray, Kylo, Paul, Finn. They all went through their own journey. They all, uh, they were, they went through that. They were in the same event from different aspects, and then they went through their own personal little uh, character arcs as well. And they came back, came to the f same place, roughly the same place at the very end. I think that was a really good structure. Now some of those. Subplots, you can argue that may not be as good as s some of the others, uh, but it had a really clear, concise structure that I really appreciated. The Rise of Skywalker was a bit of a mess. I, I don't, as opposed to Force Awakens and The Last Jedi, I don't really think it, as character-wise, it stands very well on its own two feet. And now that's not too surprising considering this the third movie in the trilogy and it's the third time we see these characters. Of course we're going to draw from uh, how you how the memories of the first two movies, but still sometimes it gets a, I think it gets a little carried away about what the audiences uh, are expecting or know it sometimes a little uncomfortably so. Mm, it does also address it did it, it is part to address some of the issues that the people have been having with the new trilogy so far particularly with the last jedi because that's like that's not his movie it's 
so uh, there were a few points where it's not it's not really it's not really going back on those decisions it's more like trying to explain them further in a way that might appease the fan base i don't know if i really like that in the final movie i mean it's the the what, what the fans are doing as much as 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 important as the fans are to the star wars franchise what they do how they think that's outside of the star wars universe and to put those elements inside just to remind people of what happens outside when star wars is this pure uh imagination based and uh, immersive universe it's kind of out of place to me it's like those i recently discovered that coca-cola is actually part of the star wars canon just because coca-cola had a deal with the star wars galaxy's edge uh, attraction so <laughs> there is this uh, if you look at wikipedia which is the fandom wiki page of star wars and there is and search coca-cola you see that they have this little grenade shaped coca-cola can can it's really stupid let's call it what it is that's idiotic that's kind of inappropriate i mean not don't can't don't have anything to do i, can, I can't do anything about it and if I do visit the Galaxy's Edge one day, I hope I do, I'm going to grab one of those grenade-shaped Coca-Colas and just drink it like Norman Reedus drank um, those uh, monster energies. Actually, when it comes to grenades, maybe they're more like uh, thermal detonators, kind of the equivalent of hand grenades in the Star Wars universe. I digress once again. <coughs> Okay, this, the Rise of Skywalker had some really interesting ideas. I would say... I would say that overall is a uh, self-rounding story. Uh, once you... Uh, if you've seen the first... The first... It feels kind of disjointed from the first two films in this uh, trilogy, but... Here's the thing. I should probably just stop altogether calling it a trilogy. Maybe we should all do that. Now, I, I can't really prove that I've uh, predicted this in any way, but I did say uh, sometime after the second trailer of The Rise of Skywalker came out, uh, I got a sense of what this movie was trying to do. It's trying, really trying hard to end this saga in an epic and final way. I pointed out that maybe one day when people look at this, the nine film Skywalker saga, it's, going to, it's not going to be Trilogy 1, Trilogy 2, Trilogy 3. It's going to be going to be something like the prequel trilogy, the original trilogy in the middle, and and the the other the last one is not the sequel trilogy but the sequel duology, and the rise of Skywalker. It's like Force Awakens and the Last Jedi. They while they are very different, they take place almost immediately one after the other. They and I feel like they are all about com the last Jedi is about completing the arc started from the Force Awakens, albeit maybe in a different direction than many of us expected. Such as uh, the Force Awakens introduces these characters, uh, they introduce them at their very initial mindsets, and the last Jedi took them to a more final, determined mindset. Such as they introduced Rey in the Force Awakens, um, she was a confused girl, a scavenger. Uh, waiting for her parents, gave up on waiting for her parents, decided to go look for, go see Luke to seek out her destiny. And in The Last Jedi, she was disappointed by Luke not really accepting her. And she's still trying to find her parents. She doesn't, oh, she learns that her parents are nobodies. She, and then after that, she decides that she's a, that, that she still wants to fight for the, light side of the force she does not want to take kylo's hand and in the end she goes back to help the resistance out of her own free will not out of her uh, not because of some legacy left by her parents or anything to do with luke or anybody else it's just her own decision and that's a character's journey that was completed in a matter of days started by force awakens completed by the last jedi um when you see the rise of Skywalker and what she goes through, I mean, I can't really divulge exactly what, but it, once you see it, it might, you might feel like it's 
outside of this arc. It's like a completely new thing. Um, similar Finn storm uh, stormtrooper defect. I mean, is defect the right word? Well, he's a former stormtrooper. He gave up on a stormtrooper rule of life because they suck. And he becomes, and in the last Jedi, he well, he has been trying to r run. He's uh, throughout the Force Awakens and the first half of Last Jedi, and uh, after that, he became a dedicated rebel scum in his own words. So, again, a character arc. Well, the Rise of Skywalker is this curious case that it tries to continue everybody's arc in some new directions, I would say. Uh, but that's particular. But, but that's most prominently focused on Rey and Kylo Ren. I think Finn, Poe, instead of going through little character journeys of their own, they they really don't change all that much. It's just a few more things have been revealed about them. But that's not really. But that's character revealing. That's not really development per se. I think the. The good thing is, uh, a lot of people have been missing that kind of trial dynamic from the original trilogy, even from the prequels with Obi Wan, Anakin, and Padme. Because Ray, Finn, Paul, they never really fucking see each other all that all that often in the Last Jedi. Hell, Ray and Paul only got got to know each other at the end of Last Jedi. I I don't even know how that happened because I believe there was these one these brief periods of time when she and Poe had to be on at the same place at the end of The Force Awakens. They had to all be back out of the Resistance base before Rey took the Falcon to seek out Luke. They had to see each other sometime, right? I, I guess they didn't and nobody introduced them, so they only f saw each other s formally for the first time in uh, at the end of The Last Jedi. And there were some... <sighs> This is just uh, some of the things I believe that's due to the uh, nature of the unplanned nature of this new trilogy that we are missing some of the trial dynamic. We don't see Luke Han Leia in the fr in the same frame ever in this trilogy, and uh, that's kind of unfortunate, but also inevitable if you really want to tell this story. And does add a bit of a tragic sense to it, so I don't really mind that. But Ray Finn, Paul, not ever having a real interaction three way, it's just plain fucking weird. Fortunately, the Rise of Skywalker, I believe, uh, makes up for this in leaps and bounds, because we have a lot of we have a lot of sequences with the three of them together on various kinds of adventures, doing their various missions. And that's one of the reasons why the movie feels like so fast because they do a lot of things together and they do a lot of and Ray does a lot of things herself. So there are a lot of things happening. If we can count just how many scenes uh, there are in, in a Star Wars movie, I believe we can. Of course, we can do that. Maybe we will. I believe the Rise of Skywalker is going to ha do going to have the most scenes in any Star Wars film and it's going it's not going to be close it's in the, or whatever the second one is is going to be pretty far behind Whew. I think I, I'm out I have a ton out to say but really I don't have all the time in the world I think I need to give some initial conclusions as to how I feel about the Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker Overall, I enjoy the movie. It's not a Star Wars movie that I immediately loved, unfortunately, but I did enjoy it. It has some incredible action scenes, uh, some really strong moments. Um, I think uh, it's definitely going to be memorable. Maybe not every scene is going to be memorable, but the finale, the uh, uh, most of the things that it's building up to, they were memorable enough. Well, as a Star Wars movie, so the special effects are great. I do think JJ indulged himself with the lightning effects a little bit too much. 
emotion wise this movie hit this hit the spot at certain points but overall it's a little disjointed it's a little disappointing uh i can point to a lot of things in this movie that's disappointing but really i don't think it's shot all that well the cinematography like i said earlier is possibly an all-time low for the franchise um sometimes it there were a lot of this uh, gray blue color that you see on this poster i mean it looks great on the poster and it looks great when you take out any one scene uh, but you're constantly staring at the color it gets boring after a while i think it, uh, star wars fans are going to have a ton to discuss about this movie they're gonna have a ton to enjoy too they're gonna have their some of their fanboy dreams fulfilled um a, mo a more serious movie fan or a more with a more critique ma mindset mind f might find this a little bit troubling because i don't think it's shot all that well i don't think it's structured all that well i think the dialogue is the worst in a new trilogy um which is unfortunate because that has always been a strong suit regardless of everything else uh, in the end i believe this uh, new trilogy of Star Wars are very entertaining. They're very worthwhile watching. I like. I I loved the experience of watching them. Even though, they're I don't I don't necessarily love the movies as much as some of the previous ones. And I really wish someone uh, like Dave Filoni for the for the TV shows that he has produced would be a guiding hand from the beginning and just to guide this guide uh, guide this trilogy step by step and i really wished that carrie fisher did not pass away but that's not up to us and for what i for what we got i'm pretty thankful uh definitely there's room for improvement i don't believe this is going to be this last star wars movie maybe they will never make episodes 10 12 11 12 i'm fine with that but they're definitely going to be making more star wars movies that much is certain maybe not in a few years but eventually they will this is just too big of an ip um the recently the news are that uh, that uh, lucasfilm may step away from the trilogy format which is just like a godsend new to, uh, news to me uh, this is like the best piece of news i've heard from them because i believe making this a trilogy was the first mistake well the first mistake was not making a trilogy is about making it a trilogy without first planning out why it's a trilogy because the real reason it's a trilogy is because star wars has always come in trilogies the original four five six the prequels one two three so naturally when you do sequels it has to be seven eight nine right right no not really it really should depend on what kind of story you are trying to tell if you're telling a story that takes one movie to tell, then make one fucking movie. Uh, and it's the same frustrating thing that they have always been doing. Now, I'm not one of those Disney criticizers. I don't really think this is on Disney. I think it's more on Lucasfilm more than anybody else. Because Disney makes tons of other movies of, of, of various but generally great qualities. Is there's no reason why Disney suddenly doesn't understand how movies should be made with Star Wars. Well, I don't understand why they ha had to make things in trilogies just because it's Star Wars. Uh, they r they announced that they were going to do the trilogy of, of Star Wars films with Ryan Johnson, then with uh, Dave Benioff and Wise. And no, none of those seem to be panning out. Um, well, I don't know if that's unfortunate because I, don't, I haven't seen the movie. I haven't heard any approach to them so i don't know what i'm missing you can't really miss what you don't have it's just weird that they have uh, that when even when they're trying to develop these uh, sta seemingly standalone unrelated stories they still want to do trilogies i don't know if it's about maximizing your uh, income income or something but even if that's the case even if you have uh, two sequels in mind how about always focus on making one solid film and if people like it enough even though it does not require a, tri uh, require a trilogy 
you're probably going to get that eventually and it's going there are going to be better movies because of it or at the very least you make a really solid first movie and that's always precious and we've seen the case of that people love the movie so much that despite the fact that it doesn't really need any sequels at all people are clamoring for it and uh, the studio are more than happy to oblige of course because it makes them more money look at joker they're talking about doing the joker too and joker absolutely should be a standalone film but we are going to get a sequel and i guess and maybe it'll be really good too i really fucking love the joker i wish i loved i in my mind i wish i loved this mo- this one as much uh, i'm gonna be honest the fact that i don't think this is such a very well made film is disappointing but i expect it Star Wars has always been really special. It's always been really different, and it's always going to be that way. Sometimes we what we demand for Star Wars is just is not the same thing as we do for other movies, and I think that creates kind of a dissonance and a confusion with the people in charge of the create of the contents. Um, the success of the Mandalorian has got me thinking. Uh, uh, kind of shed me a new light about why The Last Jedi was so divisive because Ryan Johnson just is what he does best is he takes the uh, good old cliched store uh, uh, elements or uh, elements that are introduced by other people such as the case in The Last Jedi and uh, do his unique spin on them he tells his own story about them regardless of what of uh, how other people feel Regardless of how the fans feel, he just wants to get his vision out on the front, and but basically he he tries to do his work on how the story goes, uh, subverting your expectations every step of the way. But that's uh, the Mandalorian reminded me. I still really like the Last Jedi. I really like his approach. But the Mandalorian reminded me that Star Wars is uh, traditionally that's not what the Star Wars is about. That's not why people fell in love with the Star Wars in the first place. Not even me. We fell in love with Star Wars because it is not because it subverts our expectations. Not because it does anything with uh, d- anything unique, character-wise or plot-wise, but because it's able to transport these old cliched familiar safe storylines into a galaxy far far away it takes that to it takes the things that we know well and puts a new spin on them by putting them in a completely new and fantastic adventure land and the mandalorian is like that it's like every each episode is like an old western serial but it takes place it is so much gets so much more intense and interesting when it suddenly takes place on some desert planet or a guild of uh, intergalactic bounty hunters or elements like that and i guess if you were trying to make anything star wars it's pretty hard to pinpoint exactly what people are wanting and i don't envy their position to be honest well i I think that's all the time I have and I'm going to end this initial thought video right here. This is going to be a really awkward video. Mm. Basically in conclusion, I like the movie, didn't love it, has a lot of flaws. <laughs> um I'm going to give this movie a few more goes and uh, just to reach some somewhat of a final conclusion re-examine my opinions on it maybe they will completely change maybe the next time you see me i'll be like oh my god i was completely wrong forget everything i said well i guess that's it so thanks thank you guys for watching or rather listening to me thanks for indulging me i just had to get a few things off my chest star wars kind of has that cold on me Anyway, thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, have a good one, and may the Force be with you always.